I'm Linda Casey, and this is Package Design Matters. Tell us a little bit about your background and how it led you to this role at PepsiCo. Well, my background, I'm an industrial designer. <clears throat> uh, I study industrial design and design strategy uh, in the Polytechnic of Milan. And then I did an experience in, um, in Dublin, in Ireland, for one year, where I really had a completely different kind of approach to industrial design than the one there was in, uh, in Milan, associating strategy on one side and then pure industrial design on the other. And then life, my career, my professional journey took me to touch design in many different aspects, from uh, industrial design at the very beginning, but really projected to the future innovation in Philips. Then I had my own uh, company where in parallel I was working on the digital world, so design in digital and then the experience with brands in the digital world. Uh, and then in parallel, the world of wearable technologies and wearable to um, computers. So again, technology, but this time in the physical space. And then from there, uh, the experience in 3M, where I've been working from industrial design to brand design across a variety of different business and markets. And then finally, in PepsiCo, where I'm trying to leverage that kind of approach uh, that is very holistic, mm -hmm. leveraging different kind of discipline inside the design world, from industrial design to strategy, innovation, brand design, interiors, apply to building amazing, beautiful, engaging, meaningful experiences with our brands in our portfolio. I love how you talked about um, all the different things that you, that you do. And you've done this thing with wearables, with fashion with technology, as well as you know, your work with 3M and now with PepsiCo. And 3M, you know, you're, you're quite famed for creating this design culture. And um, here you are at PepsiCo kind of doing the same thing. Uh, with the design center again. So um, how do you create a culture that, um, a creative culture that appreciates the power of aesthetics in a company? Well, the challenge in PepsiCo and 3M uh, is very similar. Uh, big corporation, US centric, but in the meantime dealing with a market that is more and more global. So trying to understand how to be global, but in the meantime, locally relevant, uh, trying to grow the business as they always did, extreme, both extremely successful companies, in a scenario, in a such a scenario that is radically changing in the past few years, mostly because of internet, uh, the global <clears throat> approach to the market, uh, social media and the role that they're playing, and then what I define as digitally enabled manufacturing and digitally enabled new ventures. So internet sites like kickstarter.com or technology like 3D printers that are enable, enabling consumers to actually come up with new ideas and new ventures and then compete with big corporations. So big corporation facing a changing world. <clears throat> and design is, is a discipline that is playing a very, very important role to connect all the different touch points of the different brands existing or eventually new, so that's when we talk about innovation, new brands and new products, uh, into one meaningful, relevant story and experience for consumers. So the way of building a new culture in such a companies, you know, with all their differences, but also their similarity, is really about linking every time what you're doing as a designer with the value that you're building for the society, first of all, for our consumers, for our customers, and then therefore for the company itself. So the business value that you're creating for the company, as well as the innovation drive uh, that the company is um, having out of this new discipline and mindset. Bringing that kind of design aesthetic philosophy to other departments could be kind of hard, couldn't it? But like marketing, advertising, you know, to uh, even purchasing to someone who is, um, you know, who's on the maybe on the marketing side, who's looking more more on hard data versus on the power of aesthetics of the design. Well, um, it's about explaining but mostly it's about doing. And that's why as designers inside corporation, we are also very lucky because we have the opportunity to explain the value of design by doing 
things, by creating things, by going to market with new things. <clears throat> and so this is really uh, probably the most important uh, approach when you enter a company like PepsiCo, you need to show the value of design, well, start doing things. Obviously, you also need to create culture, so building awareness about what design really is and how it needs to be integrated inside the company is extremely important. But then try to find as fast as possible people that can partner with you, leveraging this new approach uh, to anything they do, and then with them build quick wins build things that go to market and show the value. Now, for a company, at the end of the day, the most important thing, if you ladder up, ladder up, ladder up, is top line and bottom line growth. I mean, companies are here to grow. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is how shareholders are also uh, measuring our, our performance. Uh, but the reality is that then the company itself, by interacting with the new organization, we will, they will um, understand very quickly there are a variety of different subjective kind of value, more qualitative kind of values that we're bringing to the company to foster that kind of innovation approach, to speed up that kind of growth of, the, of sales and profit. And this is really about uh, the rate of innovation ideas that we bring to market. It's about uh, the relation that we build with customers and they, how they react to what we're doing, how they engage with us, partnering with us to innovate together, is how the consumers are reacting to what we're doing. So all of this is something that the organization starts to feel during the projects, during the process. I saw it happen in 3M, I, saw, I see it happen in PepsiCo. Uh, you try to justify first why you need to invest in design. You try to define the ROI of design, but the reality it is that while you are in the journey, the company understands more and more what is the value that the organization is building through a variety of different qualitative feedbacks, and you don't need to justify anything anymore. It's going to become very intuitive to the organization. When you're working on a project, how do you evaluate its success? What does success look like for you? So as a design team, the very first goal that we have right now is to take the innovation culture of the company to the next level together with our partners in the R&D organization, in the marketing organization, uh, with the executive of the company as well as with the rest of the body of the company. So we need to really uh, take the innovation machine of this company to the next level for this new society. This is the collective goal that we all have. So if that's the primary goal, then <clears throat> it's not just about the results of what you do in the market, the single project and the, and the return on investment of that single project, but it's more about how this, the creation of this culture is moving inside the organization, how the collective projects together are changing the way we approach innovation, the way we look at new products, we look at new brands, uh, the way we prototype experiences and idea during the process, the way collectively we are more willing to bet on specific different challenges that can really change the game. So that's the, the first goal and, and how you measure with a variety of qualitative kind of feedbacks during the process, the engagement in the organization and how the organization is changing. And then you have a series of <clears throat> uh, criteria instead connected to the specific projects. So when the product goes to market or the brand goes to market or whatever is your solution goes to market, you measure what is the impact on the business. And the impact on the business, again, obviously at the end is ladder up to sales and, 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 and profit. But um, is also, as I said before, the relation with your customer is the reaction of the consumers. We are also uh, working to increase the love for our brands, to you know, to improve more and more and more in that aspect. And so, uh, how to gain mind share, you know, in the society, how to gain more and more love for our brands in the society is something extremely important. You know, where does risk play in? Um, in, in the design process, you know, how do you know how much risk to introduce and how, you know, if you're introducing too little risk into the process? The reality is that innovation is by definition risky, is by definition inefficient, is by definition difficult to control. Uh, so the, 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 real, um, the real approach is how to balance perfectly what is the right level of risk you want to take 
and and this is not easy. Mm -hmm. For sure, um, you you want to involve in the process as much as you can your consumers, your customers, and a variety of different experts inside the organization and outside of the organization. Um, to increase the level of confidence, and so confidence is the other key words associated to risk, inside the company that what you're doing makes sense, what you're doing is the right thing to do. And that's why design is playing a very, very important role, because design, if you leverage design and you start to mock, mock up your solutions uh, very early on in the process, it could be a product, it could be a video, it could be a sketch, it could be a story, but the ability of prototyping that experience very early on in the process and then connect with a variety of different stakeholders and your consumers and your customers to build on that experience their knowledge, their know-how, their feedbacks, and then you tweak it and so it's a loop, it's very iterative. Uh, that's really what design is doing and how design is mitigating risk and is managing that kind of um, factor inside the innovation process. In a way, being able to execute well and execute quickly can help you take more risk on in your design process and be able to market your products more effectively and really see how it fits into the marketing and business strategy. Yeah, and then we also need to keep in mind that there are a variety of different brands. There are you know, multi-billion dollar brands, you know, mass market distribution, and there are other brands instead are more niche, they are new, they are innovative, new product categories. So the risk you take on the different brands is very different. You know, by definition, the size of the brand defines also the size of the, of the risk that you're going to take. Uh, so you may, you, know, you may have different approaches to innovation on the base of the different parts of your portfolio. Uh, so that's another opportunity that as, as design thinkers and innovators inside a big corporation like PepsiCo, we have the ability to play with different realities in different ways and experiments and take risks in different ways in different parts of the portfolio. I'm looking right over your shoulder at the Cracker Jack um, uh, bag in the pouch. And I mean, Cracker Jack is a heritage brand. And um, most people in my generation, and I'm sure um, yours, remember the Cracker Jack box very fondly. But you really were able to take on risk and market to a whole new consumer segment with that. And it's, you know, risk can sometimes have some very big rewards. Now, was it difficult to? get the retail buyers on board with that design. You know, how difficult it is to collaborate with retail buyers and get them to understand the value of taking an already well-performing product and updating it and changing it. This is what we're trying to do at very high level inside the organization, you know, show that PepsiCo really want to drive innovation to the next level, want to keep doing it. And sharing that idea with our customers and partnering with them from the top all the way to the bottom of the organization, trying to change things together, that's extremely important. The more the, cust the customer, so the retailer, will understand that you as a company, are a company who want to change the game, want to do innovation, the more they will tend to respect your opinion, your vision. I saw this happening with 3M in relation with a variety of different customers. The more the company started to introduce design, the more they were driving innovation, leveraging this new discipline that by definition tells a lot about how the company is really trying to change the game and step up the innovation machine. The more we're seeing customers' feedbacks they were really reinforcing and endorsing this approach, and they were really encouraging. They were really getting on board with us. They wanted to change the game with us. So I apply the same kind of approach here in PepsiCo, and we are seeing very similar results. Build relationship with the customer. And by the way, this is not just me and design. This is something that Indra, PepsiCo, the company has been doing with customer for a while. So the, the willingness of PepsiCo to invest in design, introduce a new complementary approach to innovation, to bring innovation to the next level, I think is just the evidence of a company that really want to drive things in a different way and understood that design is one of the key drivers and key components in this new society to drive innovation. And the customers are, are getting it more and more. They will get even more and more with time. What is it like to have that seat at the business strategy table at the beginning of a project versus afterwards, after marketing has set the strategy and you have to execute. Once we get a seat at the table, we better perform. 
And this is, I think, the, the problem we're having as a design community, uh, that we love what we do, and we love the creative part of what we do. And having a seat at the table is a little bit like a graduation. Now we are, you know, we play in a completely different kind of field, and we need to be able to engage our counterparts in business kind of conversation. And there are designers that can do it, and designers that can't. Design designers that understand what innovation is, and designers that can't. And so I think is, first of all, very, very important for the education system in, in, in the United States and beyond to uh, prepare designers mm -hmm. to be able to engage in these kind of conversations. So that's, that's the first thing. The second is we as design leaders or business leaders in corporation, we need to coach and train our own design organization to be able to engage in these kind of conversations. Because the problem is that once you get the seat on the table, mm -hmm. if you disappoint you know, the company, the, your business counterparts, if you're not able to engage with the company in that kind of conversation, you're not damaging just yourself, you're damaging the full design organization inside your company, but mostly you're damaging design outside of your company. I mean, there are very few companies with design leaders at the top of the company nowadays. You can count them, you know, in few hands, in the fingers of few hands, there, there are really few. The positive thing is that the number is growing exponentially, and you know, year, month by month. Um, but if even one of them screw up, does something wrong, that has an impact beyond the company. As well as is you know, yeah. the one that do well are having an impact beyond the company. So I think as design leaders, at the top of a design organization or in the leadership team of this design organization, we have the really the responsibility of being able to engage with the company and with the customers and, and the variety of different target audiences outside of the company in conversations about how to leverage design to drive business growth. My leadership team, what, they, what I ask them, what, how we measure their performance is, their goal is drive growth for this brand, this part of the organization through design. So it's not just about doing amazing things to design, with design. Mm -hmm. Leverage design design thinking to drive innovation and growth. Well, that's going to be difficult for some designers to get their head wrapped around. So how do you find designers and develop them to really have this business understanding of important you know, tactics and strategies like the uh, building market growth and growing that as uh, through design? I mean, that's that requires a certain type of thinking. Well, first of all, it's something you you have inside, mm -hmm. and what I mean is, no matter what is your background. For instance, I I never had an MBA, or I never went to business school. But no matter what is your background, if you are curious, you are gonna learn. You know the different worlds, the different realities that surround you. So curiosity is one of the key attributes for an innovator, an entrepreneur, because it's gonna drive you really to learn things that are not part of your background and to grow as much as you can. Curiosity implies traveling, reading, uh, listening with humility to a variety of different people from you know, junior people all the way to uh, people with a lot of experience, from business people to R&D people to designers is really about learning as much as you can. Um, if you have that kind of level of curiosity, then you're gonna grow as much as you can, and this will help you understanding the company, the business world, uh, in a more relevant way, understanding how to uh, really build value for the different um, parts of the organization that you have in front of you. So that's one. The second one is, um, if they're young and they come from school, they're just fresh out of school, and make sure that they come from school where they've been exposed to business thinking and strategic thinking. And then if they come from other parts of the organization or other companies, uh, making sure that they've been exposed to that kind of thinking during their journey, their career. Um, and by the way, I want to clarify that it doesn't mean that every designer in the world needs to be a strategic thinker and a business thinker. Mm -hmm. I met amazing, amazing design talents uh, that can get, you know, that can translate an insight into something that is phenomenal and eventually is going to sell a lot. 
Um, so if you want to be just a designer, you want to design great things, that's enough for you if that's the career path you want to have. And that's what we're doing also in PepsiCo. We're creating career path for those kind of experts. I remember in the R&D community, well, both in, in PepsiCo and in 3M, there are specific career paths that lead you to the top of you know, the hierarchy of the company just focusing on research and just focusing on you know, experimentation and you know, doing things new. But then you need also the business thinkers, the one that can translate uh, what you do into a business language that can connect the two, that can help you driving innovation that is relevant for the company, is going to create value for the company. So you need both inside the organization, and we are search searching for both. Now, what advice would you give a young designer? Change point of view. Traveling and reading will help you also uh, getting out of a specific perspective and learning the perspective of others. So that's extremely important. The second thing is be optimistic. Optimism is extremely important when you're going to when you're changing things, you're changing the culture of a company, you're trying to change the world, you're changing uh, uh, the way people interact with products, with brands. When you're trying to change or evolve anything, mm -hmm. you're going to face roadblocks. You're going to face uh, problems. It's part of the game. It's okay. If Actually, if you don't face that, it means that some, you're not changing anything. So optimism is very important to understand how to go on every day, no matter what. Resistance, resilience is another key characteristic and is linked to this. Optimism will em enable you to be resistant and go on and on and on. Have a vision. So understand where you want to get, where you want your company to be in the future, and then walk back and rebuild that path, you know, that journey mm -hmm. to death. Eventually tweaking the direction on, on the way is fine, it's okay, but knowing every time where you're going, this will really help you going on no matter what, because when you're trying to evolve things, change cultures, uh, there will be some battles that you will, that you will lose. It's part of the game as far as you know what is the final goal and you, your goal is to win the bigger battle, the, the, the big one. Uh, then as designers, know what you're talking about as designer. So know design, know the discipline, uh, keep upgrading yourself, updating yourself, keep studying, keep yourself on top of the game. And then the last thing that I search in a designer is this, this idea of this ability of being elegant and tasteful. So understanding, because the problem is we keep talking a lot about strategy, about business, and so you may end up finding designers that are amazing strategists, but they're not designers anymore. <laughs> and so that's extremely important, you know, that base, the fact that we are, at the end of the day, no matter how much, um, how strategic we are, how innovative we are, we are designers, first of all. So let's make sure that we have that sensitivity to understand what is a beautiful packaging, a beautiful product, that we can recognize intuitively what is beautiful for what is not, uh, and what is meaningful for what is not, uh, what is tasteful for what is not, what is elegant for what is not. This is extremely important. So make sure not to, to, not to accidentally leave aesthetics out of the equation. Yeah. Well, and was this, you know, this be curious and this aesthetic focus, was this part of advice that you got when you were starting out in your career? And was, what was some of the best advice that you got when you were starting? Well, I've been very lucky to be surrounded by amazing innovator in the Polytechnic School, University of Design of Milano, and then people that I decided to transform in my mentors early on in my career, like Stefano Marzano, the chief design officer of, of Philips, or Claudio Cecchetto, this amazing uh, show business entrepreneur in Italy, uh, extremely um, successful. And so I didn't get that kind of advice, I just observed them. But an advice that I somehow got out of this observation, and, and that has been extremely important is, um, both Stefano and Claudio, mm -hmm. they were all about trying to innovate, innovate, innovate. So for instance, Claudio, we were having this, we had a company together, and uh, Claudio's been discovering many famous singers in Italy, and then 
has been building some of the most famous radios in Italy. He's a very successful um, producer and, and, and promoter and DJ and singer. He does many, many things. But um, he was, you know, so we were working with many of these celebrities. And his advice was like, you know, we, we're not working to give a service to others. We do that as part of the agency, you know, activity and everything. But what I really want to do is to do something that nobody ever did before. That's what we're here for. So yeah, we're going to pay the checks and the bills, you know, in the short term by also providing services. We're going to design packaging for this. We're going to design an inside for that, the CD for the other one. But we need to invent something, something that nobody ever did before. Could be a service, could be a product, could be, and, and, and obviously it was in the specific world. You need to understand where you are playing, what are your assets and what you can leverage. But this idea of innovation, no matter what you do, you need to innovate and do things differently. That's something that Claudio gave me directly, explicitly. I got also from Stefano Marzano. And then I've, I've been observing in any successful leader that you find in a company or in the business world, in the society today, you can observe this common trait. They want to do things that nobody else ever did before. They want to innovate. Yeah. What's the most satisfying project that you've ever worked on? Well, I, I will give you two answers. One is a life project. So I, my project since I was a kid, I mean a kid at school, uh, was the one of somehow finding a way to impact the world, to impact the society with what I was doing. So my project for life, my professional project for life, has been the one of finding uh, access to people in the world, in the society, and somehow uh, add value to their life. You know, it could be uh, a piece of happiness, it could be convenience, it could be making their life easier, more fun, but trying to impact the society in this way. And, and so I think I've been very lucky uh, in my experience in 3M first and in PepsiCo now, because I found companies that would enable me to access people from all around the world in a variety of different ways in their everyday life. So that's m the most satisfying project is my life professional project of, of helping these companies and having this company helping me in accessing consumers and building value for them. Um, then there is instead a specific, very you know, concrete and well-defined project that is the first one I've been working on when I joined PepsiCo, that is this family of um, equipment of um, we go from fountain to coolers to vending machine and we have been working since day one since I joined the company in changing completely the experience of people with our portfolio of equipment and we have been launching a series of products in the market in a very fast way with a very accelerated timeline leveraging design and design thinking and we are receiving very, very positive feedbacks from the market, consumer, customers, and, and beyond. So that, that's a very um, positive project for me, not just because of the product and the successes I've been um, in the first days and weeks in the market, um, but also because it has been the quick win I was searching inside PepsiCo, inside the organization, mm -hmm. um, to build that confidence that actually um, the belief of Indra, Brad Jakeman, the president of Global Beverage, and other executive inside the company in betting in design, in investing in design, made sense. And we are seeing already you know, um, that kind of feedback, as well as other feedbacks like the very first brand design project that we did is the partnership with Beyonce. And, and we, we receive um, a variety of different awards for that project. And, and, and this is the, you know, the very first one that we've been working on and see how positive feedbacks we're having, not just from the market, but in this case also from the opinion leaders and the design community is really reassuring for me, for our design team, for the company, and also I think as an endorsement in front of our customers, shareholders, and a variety of opinion leaders out there that this approach of, uh, to innovation of, of PepsiCo is, is starting to pay back right away. Yeah.